Yo, how's everyone doing? It's Man United Jen. We're back. Uh, ten minutes late. This doesn't matter. We've all this extra time they have these days. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what we do. Uh, you're here. <laughs> you're joining us. Mr. B's with us in the house again. Mr. B, how you doing, bro? Um, it seems like yesterday that I last saw you. And it was yesterday. Oh, it wasn't actually. Uh, we had the before. quiz but yeah. the day before. Yeah. Mm. How have you been, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I, I just wanna, I just wanna hear what you look after. <laughs> talk about Bailu. I've had a very it's, it's strange. I've had calls and messages from like loads of different football support, just people who you know normally give you banter, who normally give you stick. Oh my god, that play you've got, Mainu. They got some of them can't even say his name properly. Kobe, you know, Manu, you know, I'm getting all these <laughs> versions of his name. And I've just been, it's been nice today. I've been sitting down like a proud dad, um, listening to all these people who didn't know that we had this player in the team, but who's actually been playing for us for the last, you know, three months. Yeah. But I think it just shows um, that people don't watch our team, which is fine because there's teams that I don't watch. But um, yeah, he's done. Yeah, it was nice. Proud, proud moment. Proud moment yesterday. It just shows as well that uh, football is a universal thing. I mean, we might go bump heads with other fans and our rival fans as well but when it comes down to it we can appreciate good football uh someone just earlier on showed me the they posted about the 1970 goal carlos alberto where italy gave the ball away and didn't get it back and it got passed amongst a few brazilian players before Pale stroked the ball to carlos alberto and i'm not brazilian but i appreciate that we all look back at that and say what a wonderful beautiful piece of art you know and what we're seeing with um, Kobe it's great I've had the same things to be people being con like just to, you know the people you talk football with at work or mm. you know, in your day-to-day -day life everyone's been con com complimentary uh, of his um, young age and how it, he's just not phased at all by anything but we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about that I just want to say hello to everyone in the comments Starting with Andrew Williams, he wants to correct our thumbnail. O'Neill <laughs> is obviously a bullshit story. Mainu was stunning, though, no doubt about it. And uh, we'll talk about that soon. Uh, hi, Joe in the house. How you doing? Hi, Joe. Nice to see you. Uh, United fan channels uh, just run with any old shit put down in their writing these days. We do, we do. You know what? You should jump on board and uh, work with us behind the scenes and brainstorm some ideas, Andrew. Maybe you should give us your number so we can... Let him sift through, through the reality of all of the bullshit and let us yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Break glass in emergency. <laughs> Andrew, we need you. Got any top stories? You know? <laughs> uh, 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 Rajat's in the house saying, Mainu, okay, potential... Like Rajat, tut, tut, tut. <laughs> Big up, Solo. Uh, salutes. How are you doing, Solo? Nice to see you in the house. Uh, seeing it all day on here, complete clickbait, bad base, of course. DK Wilson, where's he from, Mr. B? Um, let, let's let's think. Where could he be from this time? We'll go. We'll go Michigan. Michigan, Detroit, yeah. Michigan. <laughs> where all the best boxers come from? Uh, yeah, Detroit. Was it the the Motor City? Motown. Yeah, Motor City. Yeah, Motown. Yeah, Detroit. Uh, DK Wilson, big up, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yes. Hi, Joe's in the house again. Obviously, he's giving the love to everybody else. Um, DK Wilson say Liverpool people are talking trash about Kobe only because he destroyed them. Jealousy. Big up yeah. to Nicholas. Welcome to the channel. He said, does the England midfield pick itself now? Good question. I'm going to ask you, and once you respond and give us your answer and your free man midfield going forward, we will respond to you. So let I'm asking you, Nicholas, what's... Does it pick itself? And if it does, what is it? Uh, the Freeman midfield. And we will come back to that very shortly. And uh, big up to Matthew Bassett. How you doing, Matthew? Free, free, Matthew, um, with his Sunday league result. Mm. And uh, obviously, Premiership's coming back this week. So I hope you're doing well. Um, big up. Uh, Andrew Williams saying, hey, missed, was Mr. B breaking into Billy Joe? Breaking into <laughs> Billy Joe? Like, what were you thinking, Uptown Girl? <laughs> no, that's oh. a good jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that song, but uh, Billy Joe, uh, wow, I remember him. Top, top guy um, in the 80s, a long, long time ago. But anyway, anyway, what should what do you want to talk about first? Because the two main 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 We'll save the we'll save the main 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 main
for Nicholas. Uh, guys in the comments, give a warm welcome to Nicholas. How you doing, Nicholas? He's, in, he's saying here, he asked, does the England midfield pick itself? I asked him to come back, say, well, if you think so, who are the midfield three? And he's gone Rice, Maynard, and Bellingham. Now, is this the um, unanimous decision by most of the guys in the comments? Is that unanimous for you, Mr. B, from what you've seen? Um, yeah. Can I just throw, before I ask you the question, Mr. B, the guys, I've heard complaints that uh, Ward Prowse is experienced and should be getting there before him. I've heard that Maynard get there based on his performance. I've heard that um, young Elliot from uh, Liverpool should be in the team and uh, Curtis Jones. I've heard, you know, numerous uh, arguments for midfield three. But who's the best midfield three? What gives us the best chance of winning, the best balance and all this kind of thing? So at the moment, the hot topic is Maynard and everyone's throwing him in. But what are the pros and cons, Mr. B? Would you pick the same midfield three? And who else is in the running? Well, look, he, 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 the person who had, who was in control of the shirt was Arm um, Phillips. Yeah. Um, when he was not playing for Man City, he was, um, he was picked because he was this superb player that people remembered from, um, two years ago, the last tournament that he played. Um, and then the reality bit, he started playing for West Ham, cost them, uh, quite a few points directly, not even indirectly, directly not passing, um, getting robbed in his half. One of them was a, a poor back pass. So he played himself out of the position. Yep. Um, Wood Prowse has never been a Southgate favourite for whatever reason. Um, he's never really been given his chance. Um, and Maynu came in and did exactly what United fans have been looking at and been seeing. Um since he's been playing all season. So the fact that he was picked after he was picked for the full squad after being named in the under 21s because Southgate came up with some trash excuse about him not being ready. Obviously, Southgate saw him skipping past um <laughs> them Liverpool, them Liverpool players, slubber yeah. sliding and realized, oh sure, but we do have something on our hands. Took him into training. By all accounts, he was very, very good in training. Um, obviously, you know, you see the leaked videos of him yeah. pressing down and him assisting Rashford. Well, he passed the ball to Rashford and Rashford skipped past seven tackles. So I'm not sure it was quite an assist. But um, he did pass to Rashford before he was really selfish and didn't pass to anywhere. I mean, look, it was a good goal. But let's be honest, if you're training, you're not going to clap a man, are you? Let him, let him do his bits yeah. and pieces, you know. So... Yeah, I, I'm not going to say it picks itself, but he's done himself absolutely no harm at all. Um, I want to know what your thoughts are, though, Monday, please. Well, we have to, we, once the, the um, enthusiasm wears off, we have to look at it a few days later. He's had two games, played against Brazil, played against Belgium. Prior to that, played in an epic game, one of the most memorable games that I remember in recent memory, against Liverpool as well. And he's always played well in these performances. He, he can't say he's put really a foot wrong or done anything. 18 years old and performing like that. It's not just that. He's got a good head uh, on his shoulders. He plays uh, intelligently, plays calmly. Um, that I heard a joke like you can't press him because um, he's, he's not phased. Uh, he's like, been up against Anana, uh, Endo, and he smoked Endo the other day. <laughs> Endo. Uh, McAllister, World Cup winner. He came up against um, Anana and... Um, the other big uh, guy in midfield as well. Nangala? Yeah, that's the guy. And I saw the, the difference between the two structures of the guys, and he was massive, and he was putting pressure on them. Mainly wasn't phased. Then against Brazil, he was up against the two great Brazilians who play in the Premier League, Bruno Gimenez and uh, Lucas Paqueta, and the guy from Wolves as well. And he, you know, he was really calm and um, composed in those sort of uh, games as well. So, I think if you say to him, well, he's too young, but then he's played in the last few weeks, he's played against some top teams and top players and the spotlight's been on him. And the whole world have got to see him, whether it's on terrestrial TV with ITV, what in the FA Cup, where there's more viewers than watching Sky or uh, whatever they call it, BT Sports, or whatever. That was on terrestrial TV. Then on terrestrial TV again, he's got two England games, you know. So everyone is talking about him. Everyone's licking their lips about what he can do. 
um, right now. Want to say a uh, big up to Rushmana. Uh, Rushmana <laughs> is a, a member, as you know, that you still can become a member of the Manila Agenda. Rushmano has been one of the day oneers. We really do appreciate your support, Rushmano, all the time, man. What do you think about Kobe Mainu? That's the sort of discussion right now, and the England squad as well. Um, going back, just going to go back because this it was Nicholas who asked the question. Oh, about... you have to. You didn't even read the message, did you? You didn't even read it. Rushmano man... has gifted five Man United agenda memberships, guys. Rushmano, oh, wow. big up, bro. I have no idea what you did or know. how you did. Or how you did that, but bro, it's really, really appreciated. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, Rushman. Sorry, I, I thought it's just like you were because sometimes they give you like a um, a birthday, don't you? You or year being a member of the main <laughs> or something like that. But Rushman is such a community man, and I do appreciate what you're doing for our channel. And uh, yeah, if I ever met you in public, it wouldn't be a, a spud, it wouldn't be a shaker hand, it would be a come here, give us a hand. <laughs> Whatever, uh, no doubt about it. And that goes for most of you guys. But let's go back to the point here. Um, Matthew Bassett agrees. He's saying Maynu, Rice and Bellingham. But he also goes on to add that he reckons the forward line just picks itself as well. Bowden, Saka, Kane. And I, I agree with him on that one. Bowden, Saka. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can disagree. It's 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 weird, though, because Bowden looks very... um. He, he looks lost on the left for England. Um. I would like to see him on the right for England, but obviously Saka's holding down that space. Yeah, I'm not going to say we're, we're wasting a play with Foden because you can't waste a play with Foden, but it's going to be interesting going forward if if it will be those three. I mean, look, we're calling Mainu after, you know, after his performance, but Southgate might not go with Mainu. He may well go with um, Hendo um, for experience and have Mainu as, you know, that guy who breaks through in the tournament, you know, plays one game and then we realise, oh, shit, you know, he plays, doesn't play the first game. They get something and then he comes in and nails down his position for the rest. So it's going to be, I'm nervous, quite nervous, quite nervous to be fair. Well, that's something Kobe isn't. He never seems to be nervous or phased. Disappointment didn't see Bramthwaite uh, given a game. Um, that's Andrew Williams. Would have been good experience for him. We deserve better. How you doing, man? He says, I want Mayu to go to the Euros, get experience of international competitive training, being part of a unit, but not be a starter. I want him to come on with 20 for 15 minutes, 20, 20 minutes to go. Yeah, but then I don't, you know what it is? See features. <laughs> you know, the the role that he plays in, I don't, all right, he did good the 20 minutes that he came on by, by all accounts. I didn't see the game. Yeah. But in his role, you want him, I would rather he started. If he yeah. was a forward or a wide man, you know, you give him that, that sub role to maybe come on and, you know, change the game. But I, I, I think if he's going to be in there, I think he's going to be in there to start, to be fair. OK, a few more comments here before we go on to some slides. Um, Andrew Williams saying, Maynard playing along, alongside Bellingham is what will bring him on. So great experience for him. And even though Bellingham's not much older, Bellingham is two years in front of Kobe. I hope Kobe can develop at the same rate. Oh, yes, no no doubt about it. DK Wilson saying here, Liverpool people were trying to compare him to Conor Bradley, acting like Kobe just fell off from the sky and saying he's got, he's going to bust, comparing him with Marcus Rashford as well. Um, Andrew Williams saying, Emmanuel and Bellingham are uh, England's Xavi and Iniesta. Wow. Uh, bath time, how you doing? He says, how you doing, handsome lads? Uh, bath must, time, must really be on the meds. <laughs> <laughs> Big, it's good to see you, Bath Time. Um, we, you'll be back next week. Andrew Williams saying, if Foden is quality, a bit of work for Southgate will get him better, I think. Um, no doubt about it. And uh, everyone's giving Darius uh, Bath Time some love. And we've got a uh, football power hour in the house. How are you doing? He said, big up, guys. Made his birth certificate. I've got to see it. The boy's light years <laughs> above everyone else. All right, let's talk about it. Because he, he had a great performance the other day. So um, this is him against Belgium. Uh, there's the two... Well, that, who's that's the man that's Goku is or is that like um what's the name Goku yeah Do Doku, Doku 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 who's Goku isn't that like a super uh, anime character or something I have Jack love I I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Goku and obviously Anana um from Everton so in this game against you obviously mind you he came on against Brazil and uh you know got rave reviews but he started the game played 74 minutes eight 65 touches 42 uh 
Mm. Out of 47 touches were uh, accurate passes. Two key passes. One was for the penalty. <laughs> Shots on target one. Jules won. Um, I don't think that's right. Jules won 11 and lost five. Is that what I mean? Mm. Interceptions one and tackles two. Uh, what stands out for you there with those uh, stats there? It's the pass percentage. Yeah. 89%. He wasted five passes. Um, They had... They've got the key passes. Are they talking? Is a key pass that that dip of his shoulder and that that one hundred and eighty degree turn that left the two players still looking <laughs> that way for him before he passed the ball into Bellingham? Um, yeah. So yeah, look, it's it's strange. You see key passes, key jewels. One was that five of eleven. I mean, look, if he was up against Anana, um, then yeah, he 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 may well have only got five five of it, which ain't bad considering but um yeah no i i don't uh stats stats can be stats i think you have to you have to watch a game to see and i don't watch england game but i i watched it until he came off and then once he came off i decided to do something else because his job was done so like you say mr b for the penalty that he um played well help set up for england he what he does so well i feel is an i am not an either Mainu, he plays the ball very simply. So he's he's going to get high stats because he plays a simple game, plays the way he's facing um, most of the time. And then he, he sort of um, lures people in. So people try to press him. Then they realise, OK, he's popping it off all the time. And then this is what happened. He sort of surprised them. Looked like he was going to turn back and play it back home. And then realised there was an opening, cut back inside, drove a little bit and rolled it in to someone to play it in for uh, Tony, who got a penalty from that. So it's one sec, one uh, sec. Beating things up. Sorry, agile beast. Um, we know it's Anana. We were actually talking about the player in the background, but it's good that you're you're live and well. And look, keep commenting, even if even if you did get it slightly wrong. I'm joking, mate. I'm joking. Thanks for the comment. Sorry, Abonde. Yeah. So I mean, I was really impressed when he came out because the guy you mentioned earlier, Mangala, is it from Belgium and Anana? They're massive guys. And that was a real test to them because they, they're going to be on you, physical. But you dealt with it really well, really well. Let's go for some comments here because we've got some more slides to go through. Um, damn, missed you, Darius. Get well soon. That's from DK Wilson, no doubt. Um, everyone from the channel, we miss you bath time. Kobe's big strength is ability to take the ball in tight spaces. Brilliant. Yeah, uh, totally agree with you, Andrew. Uh, Emma's in the house. She's saying, oh, dear, get better soon. No, he will. Um, Andrew Williams saying, he is then usually able to do something nice with it. Okay, with the ball. Big up to Stuart Marshall. How are you doing, Stuart? Hopefully you're coming back on the channel very soon. Um, he's saying future Captain Kobe. He seems mute, though, doesn't he? He doesn't really talk much. He just does, plays his football. But if that's the, the making of a captain, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Agile Beast 21 saying, hopefully he grows a couple more inches before he turns 21 so he can become more physical. He's a beast. I will say this. I was looking at his fires the other day. No homo. But he's got massive <laughs> and balance. So I, I give him that. Sometimes you don't. Maradona, Pale, um, are, are not, Messi, not the tallest players. Xavi's not the tallest players. But he's got, He's. I think he's okay. I was a bit concerned before. But now I'm thinking, okay. He's, well, he he's must got, be six foot. He must He must be six no, foot. he's not six foot. Listen, if you see him standing up, I thought he was about 5'8". When I saw I, guys in the chat, how tall is Kobe? Well, and Andy you're... Williams is going to tell. You. I reckon he's about six foot on Monday. Uh, someone's going to Google it. I, I'm saying now he's probably about five nine. Um, five nine? No, I thought he was. And then when you see him, when you see him walk out in this, Andrew Williams is saying five eight. Okay. No, you should. Nicholas is saying uh, Maine is a very deceptive player. Opponents can't keep up. They got half the table. Oh, crazy shit. about Kobe. Sure? His most key teenagers that explode on the international scene. Pale Rooney Owen. Uh, do it of being exceptional athletes. Players like Iniesta normally take a lot longer as well. So there you go. Uh, Bafta saying, please read the second donation from uh, Monday. Sorry, from, <laughs> from not on Monday, not from me. I will read. So we had two, it wasn't donation, it was five gifted memberships from Ruff Shimano. Mm. And he's done it at five again. It's five plus five is ten. Oh, shit. Respect. Thank respect. you. Respect. Um, going back to the comments, and I do appreciate it, guys. Um, Andrew Williams saying here is. He's a bit short, but Kante was small as well. There you go. Height height is an emperor. DK was saying, who who was that Kobe ran down and bumped off the ball just outside the box? Doku, because after that, Doku started clipping uh, his Achilles. Oh, dear. 
Nasty. We deserve better saying playing in the friendly is easier than the rigours of competitive, aggressive internationals. He's 18. I want him to develop safely. Also, don't trust the media. They'll be sharpening their knives already. Big up to Andrew Small. Um, sorry, I was it Andrew Small? <laughs> He's saying he, he's five foot nine, yeah, five foot nine, five foot ten. We got here and a seven foot ten. Okay. Um, <laughs> by <laughs> uh, three foot says Stuart Marshall. That's uh, five foot nine. All right, enough about that. Let's move on to more uh, details. I've got a quote here from um, Bellingham. Obviously, Bellingham played in midfield three, as Nicholas was saying there. Nicholas is delighted with this midfield three of Rice, Bellingham, and Maynu. Now, Bellingham's done. Terrific, hasn't he? As a player, he's such a professional. I saw a clip today where, when they were doing the um, the lineup, he put his coat over the the little mascot boy, and say, "Keep yourself warm, son." You know, I'm I'm doing a nice gesture here, but it seems like proper pro and doing fantastic. Someone, I was a guy at work said to me today, he reckons Bellingham, if he has a good Euros, will get a Ballon d'Or this year. Uh, anyway, uh, the Real Madrid superstar said via uh, Romano, Kobe Mainu is very good. I know how hard it can be when there's clamour and people put a lot of pressure on you, but he's definitely a brilliant player. So he's gone from saying very good to a brilliant player. He's going to have an amazing future at Manchester United and hopefully for England as well. Uh, that's a big endorsement, isn't it? Um, Andrew Williams saying here, Jude is a class act. Wow. Coming from uh, one of our better players, Jude Ell Jude, Ell Jude Bellingham. Um, what an endorsement there, bro. Yeah. It, it shows that he's impressed not just only the management, I think he's impressed the players in training as well. So I'm um, fair play to Bellingham as as um Andrew Sim, he's he's class selling off the pit. So a lot of things he says people take notice of. So yeah, fair play to him. Fair play to him. Um the bar time saying here, anything ever comes from Bellingham saying what not to do um regarding drink Greenwood. Because you see there's a big contrast, isn't there? Phil Foden, they went on international duty with Greenwood, um, I think it was a couple of years ago, and they ended up getting in big trouble because they were naughty, you know? Um, they went out and looking for girls and that kind of thing. Um, no, they didn't look for them. They found them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I, think that's that, that's a big sign of what their character's like. Since then, I think Phil Foden's got more professional. But Kobe's got a lot of similarities with uh, Bellingham. I can't imagine we get any sort of, um, this is going to go to his head. He seems level-headed and like just like Bellingham, it's, I, well, I feel secure having Bellingham around him. He's just a bit older than him. I mean, someone to look up to and say, look, man, make sure you hold it down. Keep it consistent. Don't get involved in any foolishness. Just watch what I do. Here's my here's my number. If you ever need anything, call me. You know, uh, I think they, they would have that sort of relationship. I, mean, I think it's really good for the young man, you know, to see that. And I just think it's great to see young players now acting right because um, we know at May United... We've had a few players um, recently who don't act right and um, it can affect your legacy as we'll talk about later. But anyway, um, here we go. Andrew saying here, Foden and Jude were very supportive to Kobe on the pitch, uh, which is really nice to see. Never heard anything else about it. It's a bath time. Sort of, well, tried to bath time. I think the players really welcomed him, which is really nice. Um, Andrew, have you seen Joey Barton's list of, foot, of nicknames for footballers? I think I... Did I see that? Um, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm just randomly going through the, the comments. So, Joey <laughs> Barton, yeah. Tony all right. so overall, great performance uh, by our Kobe. Um, here's one for you. Now, you guys might not read this, but I can. Um, it's about Ivan Tony. So, May Knight are believed to be in a race to sign Brentford star striker Ivan Tony. Um, this HITC reported this morning that United are targeting Tony as he looked to sign an experienced striker who can support Rasmus Haaland in boosting the club's goal-scoring capabilities. This doesn't include Manchester City, even though Pep has claimed that Tony is one of the best I've ever seen. That's a quote from Pep. He said Tony's one of the best I've ever seen. Uh, during the YouTube interview, a renowned football journalist Romano confirmed that Tony is a potential summer target for Manchester United. United are still discussing internally whether they want to go for an experienced striker, and Ivan Tony would be a good option for sure. Romano commented. He added, however, that they would not be in a rush to sign Tony, given that several strikers are expected to be available this summer. The likes of Brighton's Evan Ferguson and Jonathan David from Lille have both been mentioned as younger alternatives that United are considering. 
So aside from age and experience, affordability will also be a factor to consider as United look to strengthen all across the field. So do, what do you think about Tony? Um, obviously, he's had a bit of a betting scandal. He's banned. He's out of the game for a long time. He's 28 now. But is, it, is that what we need? An experienced striker who knows the premiership. And um, you saw him against... He, he's getting England games now. And he got, won the penalty, of course. But is this, that what we need? Uh, an experienced striker to come in and help out Holland, Or do, would you rather go for a younger uh, guy of like Evan Ferguson or David... Uh, Jonathan David from Lille. Uh, what what's the, it depends what the price is Monday. If the, if yes. if if by some if by some fluke they can get him for under sixty English tax, um, then it might be something to look at. Maybe under fifty. I don't think they go high for um a striker. I mean, okay. I would take him. I, I have no I have absolutely no problem with him coming to the club. I'm just not sure one the club have the funds for that and two have the desire to be pushed. I mean if he's if he's a cheap, if he's cheap or reasonable, then yeah, why not? Or if he's cheaper than what they say, but you've got to look at <laughs> I mean he's guaranteed he's guaranteed goals though. Jesus. He'll be guaranteed goals. I'm just not sure that 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 as much as we need a second, the price that they want to spend on a second striker, on another striker. <coughs> <coughs> oh, Matty's saying, oh, Matty's saying Tony's contract runs out next season. So maybe, you know, if he well, could get him for like 50. Well, I've, then... heard, I've heard the rumour is, because obviously he's getting caps now. I've heard, I didn't really click this in the article, but they're saying 100 million for Tony. Um they, they can't, they can't, no, they, they, that's not going to be the price they're going to get because, as I said, he's got one year left. I know we, we tend to get skanked as United, but I think those days are done. I don't, I don't see how, I don't see how we, um, we pay that kind of money for him. Okay, a lot of comments coming through, uh, a lot of thoughts on Tony, um, some positive as well. It's just the price tag, I imagine. Um, I have to respect this man, he's come through the ranks, come up through the leagues as well. And done pretty well now that he's in the Premiership. Um, obviously, he's getting England caps as well. If it wasn't, I think mm. that betting scandal being out of the game really hurt his reputation. But um, Andrew Williams saying he was impressed the other day with his hold-up play uh, against Belgium, the top side like that, and obviously won the penalty. So he's getting props here from Andrew. He's also saying everything that popped into him, he protected and moved on. Really, that's a good side of his game, isn't it? Mm. Uh, as a hold-up guy, he does hold up the ball really well. Um, we've got we a better saying at the time England and the FA fed Greenwood to the uh, Wolves in the presser and guarded Foden to safety, both were bringing girls back. Uh, going back to that story on international duty, agile ability to beast is saying here, Tony is good, but 70 plus for a 20 year, 28 year old just isn't bang on for your buck. Um, so he's disappointed that we would pay that sort of money. Um, Tony's contract runs out next season, as you were saying there, Benjamin Seco. Is his choice? Uh, we deserve better. Says that he's playing for uh, Red Bull, isn't he now? And uh, DK Wilson saying Jonathan David can't even dominate games in North America. Uh, he shouldn't be expensive. Said Matthew Bassett. Uh, big up to JJ FF. He says another Mount where we sign him the year before his contract runs out. Mm -hmm. and everyone's disappointed with Mount, aren't they? Kieran, how you doing? I just I don't want Tony. Just go all out and get Kane back. Okay, interesting that. Wow. Uh, Sorry, Mr. B, you were saying? No, no, I just said wow to that comment there about Kane. Okay, okay. Bath time saying here, I'm not a huge fan of bringing someone with Tony's baggage into the club, especially with Ganacho there as well. Oh, God, we don't want that. I think he's learned his lesson now. Um, Paul Merson, who's I know personally, uh, he was saying the other day that um, it's an addiction and they shouldn't be banned for it. They should be supported with gambling addictions. Um, he's basically saying... Everywhere you go around football, there's advertising mm. sponsorships from uh, gambling uh, companies and that sort of thing. Andrew Williams saying here, yeah, personality is an issue with Tony. Um, he is a big time Charlie. We've heard that before, haven't we? Um, we're very disrespectful comments towards Brentford as well. That's from Tony, undermining them, he reckons. Uh, Stuart Marshall saying, I like Tony, but I don't think he's a United player. I'm sure Stuart Marshall was the one endorsing him a couple of years ago. Uh, let Brentford have their pick of who they want. Uh, to our kids to loan uh, one or two maybe, says Emma. So Emma likes him. 100 miles 
for a player with one year left, in, 100 million, sorry, no. mm. for one one year left in his contract. It's never going to happen it's again. Emma again is saying they're then hopeful they can lower the price for us. Um, two unnamed Premier League clubs in for Victor Boniface from Leverkusen, possibly United. It's, um, Matthew Bassett's like our oh, very own Romano, isn't he? Agile Beast, Beast is saying uh, Gimenez from F- uh, Final is a good option. He's rumoured to be about 30 million release clause. Mer- Mexican shirt sales could fund that alone. You and know, I like I like when people come up with players and then he's actually saying, you know, he's actually saying why it would be a good deal, you know, Mexican shirt sales. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've heard this guy's name. I haven't seen him play, but I've heard he's getting rave reviews. Mm. Kane won't have the pace that we need as we deserve better. Finally, Bath, I'm saying if it's an unnamed club, mate, it's definitely not for us. We always mm. have named clubs. Okay. So last word on Tony. I, I, I'll just say this. I think Tony, the way he takes penalties is beautiful. Like Andrew, I agree, he does hold the ball up well. I've seen him up against top, top players in the Premiership now, and now he's playing internationally as well. I think fair play to him. Um, if he can come back from this gambling thing, um, which has sort of scarred him a bit, his reputation, and clean himself up and get a big move to a, a big club at 28 years old, I think he can do something special with what I've seen him do at Brentford already. The numbers are good. I think there's a bit of a player there. So I wouldn't be... Um, too unhappy if we signed him. I'd be quite delighted if we signed him, actually. Mm. Mr. B, last word on Tony? Yeah, I'll take him, but not for... I'll take him for 50 mil. I wouldn't go any more than that. He's got a year left in his contract. 50 mil is is max I would pay for him. If they could get him for 50 mil, then I think it's something that could be done. Okay, 80 million for 28-year-old. No European experience is a bit Mm. mad among the year. Uh, I'm just saying what they put out there. They Obviously, Brentford want to get as much money as possible. As Matty said earlier, his contract runs out 2025. So if you could hustle there and be patient with it as well. Mm. Um, I don't think we're, we're the same club as we used to be where we spend <laughs> stupid money like that anymore. So, but I do agree with you, bath time. Anyway, let's move on. Um, manager talk, Mr. B. Um, um, yeah. Oh, really? I, yeah, I'll go on. I'll let you talk and I'll let you... I'll all right, let so Gary O'Neill, um, we've heard it all. I know Andrew Williams... Hold it down, Andrew. Stop typing. But we're going to touch on this. Gary O'Neill is a potential key player in the United's future. Not player, but a player as in uh, player's ball, you know, um, having an influence. In a surprising yet intriguing development, Wolverhampton Wanderers head coach, notice his head coach, not manager, Gary O'Neill has emerged as a figure of interest to Manchester United. Appointed at Wolves last August, O'Neill's impressed many by steering Wolves towards European con- contention this season following a commendable stint at Bournemouth. United's interest in him underscores their pursuit of a dynamic coaching talent with the aim of rejuvenating the club's strategic approach. And going on, the United uh, broader coaching puzzle. While Ten Hag's future as manager remains undecided, it's clear United are not just iron management uh, replacements, but also aiming to boister the whole entire coaching team. ESPN sources suggested that United have been assessing various p- potential successors, including Southgate, uh, Roberto Di Zerbi, and Thomas Frank as well, the Brentford manager. This includes a broader strategic vision rather than a singular focus on a management role. So what what are you um, reading here, Mr. B? Because it, it's saying about a uh, head coach. Could Gary O'Neill be coming in as some sort of a team, new sort of Avengers team? of management and great coaches to sort of steer the manage the football team? Um what when I heard it, I just thought it's more media um crap. Um I think the media just need to accept that Ten Hag's not going anywhere, isn't it? I think yeah. they're trying to throw any name, any reason, anything, just to hoping that something they had Southgate the whole of last week. Um, people need to remember what is what what does is it Southgate head of the Man- um league managers association? Well, he's an FA man. I, I don't know what his, his I'm name, sure he's head, head of the League Managers Association, which means there's no way as a manager of the company that employs Ten Hag, yeah, you understand that he's going to be so they they're now throwing something else, they're now throwing oh Gary O'Neill out. Okay, fine, Gary O'Neill's come out, but what was interesting was that there was a couple of articles that I read. Maybe I should. what I should have done is is found out where the sources were, saying that they're not looking at him as a head coach. They're looking at him to work alongside Ten Hag. Yes. We're, we're, lose, we're losing our assistant manager. 
at the yeah. end of the season. To Ajax. So I, yeah, to Ajax. So they're looking at somebody to fill that gap. Now, if that's what they're doing, fair play to them. It's a completely different way of, of doing things. But would a manager, would Gary O'Neill leave his managerial job at Wolves and come to be second, help to be second in can charge, second can, second in can, second fiddle. He, yeah, second fiddle to um to Ten Hag. If he's willing to do it, I think it's a genius idea. Mr. P, I'm glad you're on board because you've sort of said what I wanted to say from this article. It's not necessarily coming as a head coach or sorry, as a, as the manager. It's coming to help out possibly. This is what they're trying to sort of uh, claim here, that he would be part of a, a dream team of coaches or maybe an assistant have a role like that. And based on what he's done so far, just go through a few comments on this uh, topic. Uh, Matthew Bassett saying, I'm Eric out, but I don't want O'Neill. That's going backwards. Um, it's like we said, like Mr. B just clarified, it might not be as the main manager. It might just be to support Eric Ten Hag mm. as an assistant. Could be uh, Mickey Van something is going to Ajax possibly. But half time, I don't say in here. I don't like minor yeah. logic behind O'Neill. I assume it's the same as Arsenal yeah. to get a young team and manager to grow over three or four years. Uh, ESPN source is poor. Um, you should try a tomato ketchup then. Um, <laughs> Kieran's saying here. I'm not sure why we'd go from Ten Hag. To Gary O'Neill, we're linked with someone new every day. Of course, of mm. course, we're Man United, Kieran. Obviously, um, I'm O'Neill out straight away. Says Matthew Bassett. Uh, Emma saying here, from what, what I heard, she's on board. From what I heard, from uh, from how others understand it, they would collaborate more and work together. There you go. That's what um, you understand. I'm getting as well. Stuart Marshall saying, if Southgate came in, that's me done. Um, Matty saying here called Eric to Manchester first. Okay, um, I'm not getting that. So Gary O'Neill saying here has uh, sorry Andrew Williams saying here Gary O'Neill has done superbly in two difficult situations, but why would he leave number mm. one role at Wolves? That's, That's a question. My, mm. question. O'Neill's assistant, um, and a, even a blind squirrel finds a nut sometimes. <laughs> There's no way Ten Hag is staying for any length of time if they hire O'Neill says bath time. Could be like um, okay, what was this another situation with Roy Evans had to work with. Julia, wasn't it? And he didn't like that. He knew he was getting edged out. And the question is, why would O'Neill come? He's, a, he's ready to step down as a manager and just coach going forward. Maybe he doesn't want to be a manager and have the responsibility anymore. Uh, Mitchell going back to Ajax says, Emma, I'm going to miss Eric's twin. <laughs> the two mm -hmm. uh, rather O'Neill than Southgate says, Agile, sorry, Agile, the Beast 21. And uh, Oden still resemble Hag tick, kicked his ass out of the press conference. Uh, going further on, let's see the credentials of this man, O'Neill. So, you know, I remember him as a player. But O'Neill's first job in coaching came in 2010. He was assistant manager of Liverpool's under-23s. Six months later, he joined AFC Bournemouth of senior staff. He said he's done this before as head coach, uh, John, under head coach uh, Jonathan Woodgate, who had been a teammate at Middlesbrough, and then Scott Parker, who he played alongside at West Ham. So he's known him in football circles. O'Neill was part of the staff that oversaw the Cherries' promotion from the Championship in 2021-22, with three defeats from their four Premier League get matches, uh, culminating in a 9-0 loss to Liverpool. O'Neill then took over the <laughs> reign as interim head coach at the end of August 2022. He immediately led his side to a six-match unbeaten run, earning a nomination for September's Barkley player of the uh, month, sorry, manager of the month. Uh, the 27th of November 2022, he was named the permanent head coach on an 18-month contract at Bournemouth um, with an option of a third year. The decision to appoint him as head coach proved to be an excellent one, though, as he helped guide the Cherries Bournemouth to Premier League safety, finishing in 15th spot, which is really good considering that same season they lost 9-0 to Liverpool and they were mm. on the ropes. Uh, O'Neill was sacked by Bournemouth, so I was really surprised by that. Uh, before taking up the role of Molyneux. Why do you think, is there anything dodgy in that, him being sacked uh, by Bournemouth as well? Good credentials there. And this is his record. Look at him. I see him like this as a, a, a coach, a real coach on a training ground. He seems like one of those sort of guys. Uh, Premier League record, 6-2 matches, 22 wins. Obviously, he's Bournemouth and Wolves, uh, full 11 draws, 29 losses. Doesn't mean much this, I think, considering the teams he's taken charge of. But has this sort of... Um, Give you some further respect for Gary O'Neill. Is he more of a coach or is he a you know good manager? Because and why was he sacked by Bournemouth? I just don't understand what was going on there. With Bournemouth, it was the manager wanted to the, the 
the owner of the club wanted to go in a different direction. He wanted um, a bigger name in it. So, obviously, you know, people have their favourites. This is what they're saying about Ten Hag in it. New management structure coming in, blah, blah, blah. They want their own man, blah, blah, blah. So, hopefully, Ten Hag's going to buck the trend for at least a little while anyway. Yeah. But yeah, that's that was there. That's why that's why he left Bournemouth. Okay, so Anil would leave in a heartbeat if it's Manchester United. Says Kieran. So there you go. Um, he done like I say, he done it before. He he's got been an understudy um, at um, Bournemouth. Did Anil only get the job at Bournemouth because they didn't bring someone else in after they sacked the other manager? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I can tell you, yeah. Uh, yes, Emma, he was a left field appointment, says Andrew Williams. Uh, he's also saying in Bournemouth, Luke <laughs> and he kept them up. So that's what I'm saying. He's got credentials there. This year, he went to Wolves, who looked like a relegation fodder this summer, and he has got them playing really well. We played them first game of the season. They were really good. Uh, who's in charge of these coaching appointments? Uh, Brailsford, Omar, Fletcher, etc. Do we know? I think I read somewhere, Bath Time, I was doing the research, it's Brailsford, who's um, sort of uh, brainstorming and coming up with all these sort of uh, ideas. They got a kid in from Spain with a big reputation, says Andrew. Uh, this story is just another story to unsettle Hag uh, by those journalists who are banned from the press, a uh, non story, yeah. just resentful undermining of Hag. That's a possibility, too. We do better. The Spanish guy they got in uh, was talked about as the next big thing, and uh, that's what Andrew Williams and Emma saying here. Then maybe he doesn't mind taking a step back as an assistant again, and he's still quite young, like in his. 30s or something. I think he's, yeah, maybe 40s. No, no, he's not. He's he's older than me. Oh, I think he's about 30. No, no. Actually, you might think Gary O'Neill. I reckon he's... I look no out, guys. How old is Gary O'Neill? I reckon he's in his 40s, for sure. Um, Mr. B, Gary O'Neill. Oh, here we go. Before we go, uh, Bath was saying, Brailsford is incredibly close to McLaren. They've been neighbours from friends for years. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, more leaks there from Bath time. So, Mr. B, Gary O'Neill, I mean, where are you, where are you going with this? Is this just speculation? Do you agree that... that it's that... all media. Yeah. It's all media, yeah. I, I just think that they just... They, they don't want Ten Hag in. There's definitely a, a, a witch hunt going on. Um, And, yeah, look, he's going to be linked with everyone. Until Ineos say his job is safe, then they're going to keep printing whatever they're printing. And Ineos ain't going to say his job's safe. So many leaks, isn't there, coming out from the club when Southgate the other day, Gary O'Neill. Do you think um, the manager knows? Do you, or do you think the manager's saying, what's going on with his deal stories? No, here? no, no. It's, that's, that's what the media want him to do, to be unsettled and to be, just go about your daily news. He's already been talking to Brailsford and, and whoever else he needs to be talking to about his job security. He knows what's going on. So the media can say whatever they want. He's had backing from the board, maybe. Um, so he's cool. How, I don't think it's something that he has to worry about. Mr. B, how um, powerful are the media in influencing um, decisions on, and getting people on side? <laughs> do, you, do you think they've got that much power they can flex? Yeah, they have, yeah. The they fans have. used to wave the white flag. In, the, in Europe, the fans would wave the white flags and they want the manager gone. And it's based on the football. But it seems like the media have a lot of influence these days. Do you agree with that? Yeah, they, when, when they want to break you, they keep going until they break you on Monday. I mean, eventually Ten Hag's going to go. So at some stage, he's not going to be here forever and ever, amen. So they, they they will win. But I want him to get a new contract just to shut them up, just, just so that they can find something else to talk about. I mean, Liverpool are actually looking for a manager. Yeah. They're physic and nobody's been linked with Liverpool. And this is my point. We, Southgate is being linked with us, but Liverpool need a manager. You understand? So, you know, Southgate linked with Liverpool doesn't have the same effect as Southgate linked with Manchester United. It's all sales. It's all for because sales. For and some reason, Man United, um, then whatever it is, even if it's like news about O'Neill, that's the main news. We're not hearing much news about who's coming in for Liverpool. Um, they say bad boys work in silence, don't they? Um, yeah, media very, very powerful, says oh, we deserve better. We will come on to that. I wouldn't mind getting O'Neill in. His playing style looks exciting. From little sample sizes I've seen, that's from Emma. Mm -hmm. um, Samuel Lockhurst is uh, also a powerful dictator that controls the managerial appearance appointments at United. Wow, wow, there you go. I mean, powerful, isn't it? What you can write and have all that influence. Um, look how they protected Poch as well at Chelsea. 
and look how they're protecting Ange. Um, interesting that. Do they protect Klopp? Anyway, t- we're talking about influence of media in particular. What Our next subject, we're going to say an oath. Please, guys, you be very sensitive with this one. Let's have an intelligent conversation about our next topic because it's something I was a bit dubious about bringing up. Let's just have a normal conversation and let's not be controversial, but let's talk about this because it's about the head of Premiership Hall of Fame. Now, they just announced uh, their next 15 guys to be selected. And uh, Ryan Giggs has been snubbed from the Premier League Hall of Fame despite being found not guilty of domestic violence. He was charged recently with that and found not guilty. May United Legends' uh, latest submission suggests that he's been permanently blacklisted from receiving the league's highest individual honour. Former Arsenal players Tony Adams and Ian Wright, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2023 and 2022 respectively, were both selected despite having previously served uh, uh, custodial. custodial prison sentences. Former Chelsea and England captain John Terry has been announced as one of the 15 players in this year's shortlist, despite being banned for four matches and fined £220,000 by a Football Association Commission in 2012 for racially abusing QPR defender Anton Ferdinand. Selecting for the fourth shortlist is as at the discretion of the Premier League in this consultation with the members of the Premier League award panel. Sol Campbell, Michael Carrick, Andy Cole, Jermaine Defoe, Cesc Fabregas, Les Ferdinand, Robbie Fowler, Hazard, Gary Neville, Michael Owen, David Silva, John Terry, Yaya Toure, Van der Sar and Vidic make up this year's shortlist of nominations. Um, how do you... What do, Look, I don't want to get too controversial, but what's going on here? If you look at Giggs' honours there, he's played 963 games. He's won 13 Premier Leagues. Um... And I'm just looking at his trophy. He's got two Champions Leagues and FA Cups. He's got four FA Cups as well, three League Cups. And, um, yeah, it's just outrageous. I mean, he's got to be one of the best players in the Premier League. If you look at longevity and greatness. But um, they're obviously judging him, not on football, but on factors outside of the game and uh, what the media have, you know, said. And is it a bit hypocritical when you've got other players that have been you know, done for drink driving and done prison sentences as well. I don't know. It's just a discussion, Mr. B, but I want you to take the lead on this. They want... Maybe his discretions are too recent on Monday. Okay. Um, and is it, is it actually... Is the court, is it actually, is the court case actually over now? Is it What's done or is it been adjourned? found guilty... Sorry, he's not been he's been found not guilty. But I think obviously someone I don't know someone in the comments will let us know, but maybe he's been found not guilty because someone's dropped charges or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's a pressure. But we it's like with Greenwood. Um he was publicly judged by because there's information came out that we heard some audio and we saw mm. some images, and that will not go away for the public. So he can never turn that around. That's why he's not back at the club, for example. So going back to gigs, I mean you do you agree that he's one of the greatest players in the Premier League history? With yeah, the, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't what, think what's that. What's going on here, really? What's the true story? What's the real story? Oh uh, well, I said you don't want to. You don't want to speculate, but could it be for what it was for? Um, you know, drink driving. As bad as it is, I I, I think he didn't kill anybody. Um, in which case, it probably would have been a different a different scenario. He didn't injure anybody. He just drove into a wall, as as much as I remember. But Giggs, don't forget as well, he was whopping his brother's sister. So yeah. maybe there's maybe that part of it they don't really want to be want to be um, dragging up again. You know, I mean, it's a hard one. I I, I think he should be in, but then obviously, as I said, you know, you've got the moral police. We will decide yeah. it's something, something else. So um, maybe in, in five years' time, you know, I say once it dies down a little bit more, maybe they will induct him. But until then, I don't think I, I don't think he's got a chance. If he's not in there now, then I, I don't think he's got a chance. Or at Mr. least another five. Um, Andrew's saying it's a disgrace. Don't like gigs, but how can you argue his record? What uh, we don't care. We don't know these people personally. But what do you like gigs? Um, 
I, 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 yeah, I, I, you know, I, you've heard what he's done and always going. To be, what do you think of him as a character? When I think he's him? a slimy little. Sh I think he's slimy. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Yeah. I'm, 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 I can't. You know, I, I love both of my brothers, and I couldn't even imagine doing the things that he did. So, right. no, he, he's slimy. I understand why he's not in there, but. I think that they should find, as I said, you know, the, all these other ones have got other discretions going on. So, yeah, should be in. I mean, on footballing matters alone, he should be in. I mean, he's he's got most honours, I think, than any other premiership player. It's, it's ridiculous. So I'm going to go through a couple of comments because they've been good um, and been cussing too much. Ryan Giggs <laughs> should have been the first pick, says Andrew Williams with 13 titles. Giggs and Shearer should have been the first players in since bath time. And I doubt about it. Um, Giggs is an absolute legend, football wise, says Stuart Marshall. Uh, Bath Time saying here, Gary Neville, captain United to as many titles as Keen, should be right in there as well. So Gary Neville's up in the list. Um, Andrew Wynn is also saying, sorry, but Keen's is miles in front of these guys. You saw the list there. Uh, I think that the dilemma is we now have professional women's league that the FA are promoting. So that's could be an issue as well. It would be a bit of a disrespect, slap in the face, if someone like Giggs with. Um, the issues that he had um, coming in. Uh, Andrew saying it's a disgrace. Don't like gigs, obviously, but you can't argue with his record. Um, bath time saying here, do you remember that time they mentioned him in Parliament to get around the super injunction? Is that Greenwood? So didn't Pretty Patel um, mention Greenwood or sort of suggest that he should be um, charged or whatever? Uh, Campbell, Carrick, Defoe shouldn't be on that list at all. And that's from bath time. And of those, Gary Neville, um, Seth says, Sess and Terry and Silva with my top four. Um, and obviously, Terry, didn't Terry do something with Wayne Bridges' girlfriend? Or, or yeah, wife? yeah. Well, so it all goes on. But it's like, it's a bit, I don't know. I brought this up because I thought it's a bit double standards. And I, I think, how would Giggs, could Giggs ever turn this around, Mr. B, his reputation? And no. does it show you, no matter what you do, is your legacy everything? Is, is your reputation everything? Is that the most important thing? Better, more than honours, more than trophies, is your legacy, your reputation, the way you carry yourself, is that what people really remember at the end of the day? Um, I would I would rather have his medals than um than people saying how good of at the end of the day, you, you can block all of that out. You know, the trophies are what you play football for. Everybody's different in regards to their makeup, in regards to what they want to do in life. Some people don't like football. And play football and earn all of the money, just do it as a job. Some people go home and study it. So I just think it's 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 on him on Monday, to be fair. I, I would like him to be inducted, but maybe it is a bit say it's a bit early, but I think all of that, all of that United generation should be in there to be fair for what they did. Do you think uh Giggs would say to himself, I'd give her all my trophies just to have my reputation back? No. no. How do you think he feels when he goes out in town? Do you think he gets abused or um, yeah, but he's also going to get a lot of love on Monday. It's like anything else. Right. Yeah, you know, he, he he's going to get he's going to get the abuse from some places and other places. He he's going to get shown love. It's just it's just what it is now. Mm. Okay, yeah. So bath time. Sorry, I've got that wrong. He's saying no gigs was um, banging someone's off. Big, oh, all right, you guys read. It. I'm not going to read it out. But, um, it was brought up in the parliament. To expose it or something like that. Um, Neville Cole says, um, "VDs for me." Uh, says bath time. Wouldn't trust John Terry with my dog, <laughs> and John Terry out for trying to flog. Uh, okay, okay. Reputation for me. Reputation, everything. Um, when you die, you can't take money with you. You can't take trophies with you. Whatever. It's your reputation. How you treat people. How you are as a person. That's what uh, people remember. I, I believe. And um, but, yeah. You make mistakes. I think when you're a footballer, you're so exposed to so many things. But what he did, you just think you can get any girl you want, man. You click your fingers in the bar in the VIP lounge and say, "Yeah, I want you and you." Like uh, Williams in Enter the Dragon, I'll take you and you. And <laughs> you. That's I'm sure that's how easy it was for these guys. So to go and do something as low as that, 
And obviously his brother's come out and buried him. With, I've seen interviews where his brother's actually buried him for things like that. So, yeah, his reputation's completely tarnished and he can't even get into Football Hall of Fame. And that says a lot. So, guys, make sure you represent. Make sure you, your reputation is everything. Don't do any anything scandalous because that you, you, you can never live that down. It will stay with you, it seems. And even if you're Ryan Giggs, um, you know, you can never recover from that. Um, Andrew's saying here, when you have too much sacks... Uh, as people like me and Ryan, <laughs> you need some sort of edge. Don't judge too harsh. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Um, like I'm saying, I mean, we started the show talking about Mainu and Bellingham. These are the guys who are showing, you know, a bit more professionalism and showing how important it is to sort of conduct yourself the right way. And we end the show with gigs, which shows what happened in the past. Um, how players weren't really protected so much. You say that Alex Ferguson used to protect him, take away from Lee Sharp and that sort of thing. But it's it's tough, isn't it? Because he's he's ruined his his um, whole reputation now. Mm. Bath time saying here. Um, okay, I'm playing saxophone with Ryan. No, I'm not. Anyway, Mr. B, what's on tomorrow? Because we're back. The Premiership is back in it. Preview. We got preview tomorrow. We should have Stefan on with us tomorrow. Um. As bath time still doesn't want to talk to you face to face for whatever reason. Now nah, I'm joking, bath time. I'm on the wind up, bro. Honestly, I, I I hope you are feeling better, and we we look forward to having you back whenever you are. You're up and ready to rock and roll. Yeah, preview tomorrow. Friday we will have something. Saturday we've got an eight o'clock game, so I assume it's going to be a um a late reaction show. Yeah, for um, sure. We'll sort that out. Um, I'll try and sort out getting a watch along done. Okay. Um, but yeah, look, I'm just glad football's back on Monday. Yeah, it's been a while. It seems like it's dragging on forever. But mm. it's Easter this weekend. Obviously, Easter is crucial um, time. There's a lot of games coming up in a small amount of times over Easter. And this is where it's make or break, where things can really go wrong. Uh, title deciders and all that kind of thing. We've got a big title game. I think City are playing Arsenal this weekend as well. So that could have a big factor mm-hmm. on the league. But we definitely need points, don't we? If we, we want to be climbing up that league and trying to get that top four or five. So it's all make or break. I know we've got a game on Thursday, the following Thursday, Mr. B, uh, after this. So it's... it's I yeah, I think we're playing... Oh, guys in the comments will let us know. But we've got games galore coming up. So Good. we're back. We're back. The Man United agenda getting excited again uh, because we've got some proper premiership football coming up again. So guys in the comments, really do appreciate you tuning in. Big up to Bath Time, big up to Andrew, big up to Matty, big up to Emma, big up to everyone, Stephanie Griffiths, everyone who's jumped in today, um, Stuart Marshall, um, I can't even think, There's Nicholas as well, all you guys, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be back tomorrow for the preview, and uh, let us know if we can beat Brentford, that's the that's the massive thing, at Brentford, away, um, it's going to be a tough game, it's going to be a tough game, but we're here to sort of review it tomorrow and watch it with Mr B on Saturday and we'll be back after the game as well for a post-match um, response. So check us out, guys. For now, we're signing out. Mr B, from me, Omondi Juma, Yabba Forbes, and from... Me, Mr B! We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>